All right, yeah, thanks for being here. Uh, game week, exciting time. Um, had an off day yesterday, and so we'll have two days of prep. Uh, I'm gonna play a great Louisiana team that just beat the University of Houston, who everybody in the room knows is coming into the Big 12 next year. And so we, uh, we'll have our hands full. Um, we had a good, uh, good day Monday, not so good day Sunday after a day off Saturday. It seems to be a trend with this team. We give them a day off and it takes them another day to get back. So it's always two days off, even though they're practicing the day after. But um, we'll see if we can get that ironed out throughout the course of the season. But uh, um, excited to see them today. Um, and uh, again, we, we've got a lot of work to do. Um, obviously, uh, it's fixing to be here. We'll play uh, Friday, Monday, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or excuse me, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Um, and. Uh, Obviously, all the competition is going to be extremely good. We, we're uh, we're going to be really challenged every night uh, early on. So, uh, got to get a team ready, getting some kids healthy, uh, and getting some kids not so healthy. So, it's just kind of that time of year, and uh, we'll have to navigate that as we get through it. So, um, was this intentional? Wait, not starting till fire? Did somebody cancel or? No, um, so uh, I, I'm, I'm not a big proponent of playing in November, whatever Monday was, like that's early. You gotta remember, I've been doing this 38 years. In the old days, our first play date was Thanksgiving weekend. I wish we'd go back to that. Especially in Texas, hard to get people to even think about basketball until football's over almost. So, uh, that being said, um, they give you 42 days prior to your first game. That's when you start practice. So if our first game is Friday the 11th, you go backwards 42 days and that's your first day of practice. And I don't like practicing two days off a day, three days off a day. I like to at least go four or five days in a row, and develop some type of consistency. So we took three days off right at the very beginning of the season. We had to practice before we even started. So, but no, it was, um, it was, it was planned this way. Again, hoping we can um, draw from some of our football folks that are in town that they'll uh, come out and watch, watch uh, the third ranked team in the country play on Friday night in the, in the Moody Center. Uh, it should be a great night. We got lots going on. Got kids court, you got music out on the, out on the plaza. You got a, a thousand commemorative posters for the first th first thousand people coming. You got free T-shirts for everybody, so there's lots going on, and uh, so we'll, we'll see. I think we've sold about 4,500 tickets right now. Coach, you had said that you had a not so good practice after you had a good practice. No, you after a day off. After a day off. Yeah, okay. I can't imagine you guys play with such intensity. What does a not so good practice even look like? Yeah, it's no intensity and uh, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, as I told them, they kind of spoiled me, you know, with the DePaul game, they played really well. I thought they played really hard that night. And, uh, you know, if you saw the Whaling game, I didn't think we did, you know, we played with any type of focus or intensity that game, especially the first half. I mean, just was, it's, it's just not the standard. And, you know, we talked to them about the standard all the time and, um, and so, you know, um, yeah, practices are, you know, when they're not good, you're usually uh, not going, uh, not focused. You're not doing the things that we want to do defensively, and you're probably turning the ball over a lot. And um, and so we we've uh, it's really been a focus for us: the defense, the rebounding, and the taking care of the ball. That's kind of been our three focal points uh, in practice here this week. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Jer Jeremy, did you post something? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's you know really special. Um, anytime you can sign a Gatorade Player of the Year in their respective state, uh, you want to do that. We were fortunate to sign a two-time Gatorade Player of the Year in the great state of Texas in Gisela, and then the Gatorade Player of the Year in Mississippi. Uh, 
in Madison. So really excited. Those are two big um, wing players, and they are big time players, difference makers. And uh, uh, and then we were able to, to get uh, Abby, who's been committed to us, a six nine kid out of Dallas. So. Um, really excited about this group, excited about this class and what they bring to, to our program. I mean, Gisela and Maddie both can play all three positions. They've, they've both played one, two, and three. Uh, Madison may be the most unselfish player I've, I've seen in a long time um, and, and maybe sees the floor as well as any wing player I've seen in a long time. Then I'll go and say that about Gisela because Gisela actually played point guard for her AAU program a year ago, uh, her, uh, before the summer for her junior year, before she got hurt, and um, and played on the the EYBL circuit. So when you're playing point guard on that circuit, you're you're certainly um, challenged, and, and she handled it brilliantly. So both those wing players, boy, they're they're big. They're long, they're athletic, play really hard, love the game, and so super excited about them and their families. You talk about some great families from all three of these young ladies, so. Just to confirm with Gisela, she's enrolling early. She's not eligible to play this season, but you want her on campus so she can rehab and all that stuff? Correct, yeah, so she's, you know, she'll be about, So when she gets there, she'll be at eight months. So she can really focus and finish up on her rehab when she gets here. She can travel with us. She can, you know, whatever she can do uh, basketball-wise, she'll she'll be able. We'll we'll be able to work her in just like any student athlete that's been here and been been injured. And so, really, it'll give her a jump start on what we do and how we do it, as we say, and to get her prepared for next season. So. Um, I've never had anybody do this. I've never had anybody come at midterm, I guess, out of high school. It's pretty unusual, obviously. And so uh, it'll it'll be unique and, uh, you know, hopefully it'll be really beneficial for her and us in the future. And you sign a, uh, when, when you sign a player uh, like Gisela, you know, of, of her caliber from the Austin area, how much momentum with just those Austin ties and those local ties can that give the program moving forward? Well, you, you know, again, I think the you're, what you're hoping is that, you know, she really comes here and becomes that impact player that you foresee her to be. And, uh, um, again, you're talking about a two-time state champion. Has she lost one game in two years or none? I know they didn't lose one last year. And, uh, 97 and 5. Uh, yeah, over her career, she's 97 and 5, so I'm, I'm probably going to have to keep an eye on her early because we're probably going to lose a game or two, and I don't need her. You know, she's not used to that, which is great. But, um, you know, it is, it's really good to get, you know, you, we, we really want to close the border on Texas. And when you can close it around this area, you really want to do that. So um, excited about her. And uh, again, she's, she's somebody that we identified early on when we got here. And so it was really good to get her and, and her family. Somebody like Abby, do you have like a picture of a timetable for long-term development and is it sort of like the taller they are the more you would say we can take this kind of patience yeah so um you know we're, we're fortunate i don't think abby has to come in and play <laughs> right away we would love for abby to come in and play right away but um again uh Bigs typically take some time to develop. There's a lot going on with them and a lot of demands and not to mention it's completely different as college. And so I remember, you know, Big T um, from right down the road, she played I think 11 minutes a game as a freshman. And then saw by the end of her sophomore year, she's starting. And then she's a two-time All-American her junior and senior year. And there's a lot of people out there that didn't, you know, we were really surprised by that. Um, but when you've got a work ethic, and uh, like she did, and, a, and a really a desire, like that's what you, you know, you got to have in people that want to get to a certain level and want to be a certain way. They got to have that discipline and desire. 
And I don't think anyone really realized how Tara was so uh, consumed with that, whether it's whether she came with it or developed it over time. But once she developed and had that attitude, man, she took off. And and so um, Abby's great kid too. She's gonna want to be good. She's gonna do exactly what we want her to do every day. She's gonna do it how we want it done. So. I mean, that's all you can ask for. So uh, I'm excited about her. I mean, y'all, she, you know, you can't teach six nine. You either are, or you aren't. And so um, she's 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 got a chance to really impact the game on both ends of the floor. Um, and just like with any of our other bigs that we've had that we've developed over the years, part of that though is you got to get up and down so that you can play both ends of the floor. Um, just for starters, so. Um, you know, we're excited about her and uh, her family, and she's going to be great. I'm, I'm really excited about her. Any updates on the availability of Taylor and Kendall? Yeah, so I think Taylor will be available Friday. Yeah, she's been practicing this week, and barring any unforeseen thing from my training room today, um, you know, I think she's available. Um, I don't have any update on Kendall. Uh, so, uh, but t Taylor should be available for sure. Coach, when you look at the success of other programs and attracting fans, I think you said you had 4,500 seats sold already, yeah. which is a great start considering last season, right? Do these other programs take advantage of NIL and have a player, maybe a, a player who has that draw and utilizes that player more with the NIL? I saw statistics says women's basketball is the third highest draw for NIL. And so with these other programs having the fans come out, is there any connection with the NIL and that draw? I, I think that the connection is realizing that we have a really good team that has some really good individual players on it, some very unique players that a lot of programs across the country don't have. I, I tried to tell those folks in Starkville for four years, you got the all-time leading score in the history of girls' high school basketball playing here in Victoria Vivians. You better enjoy her while you can. And, and then we, we recruited some others that brought something to the table that were fun to watch. On our team, you, you, I can go down the list. I mean, whether it's those transfer kids, it's Rory, you got a local kid in Shea who's really done a great job while she's been here. Gaston, who I've been just, you know, waiting for the day that she gets healthy, who was the number one kid in the freshman class, you know, when she was a freshman in high school. And go on and on. So I think we've got some really unique young people here playing for us that are fun to watch, that bring a unique skill set. But the thing about them is they're not only good players, they have great personalities. I mean, come get to know my kids. I mean, they we had three of them, Rory, uh, Amo, and um, – uh, Shay this morning on, on, on Fox 7 News. And, and, and so get to know those kids and uh, enjoy their personalities and how accessible they are. I mean, Rory Harmon is the 10th best player in the country coming out of high school. Amo was number six. So we've got some really, really unique and special players. And again, I can go down the list of every player I have. Each of them brings something unique and special from a skill set wise. But then their personalities are just what, to me, really makes them. And to me, that's the draw in women's basketball is that if they'll come to one game and buy into what we're doing, like they'll never miss another one. And then it'll evolve and develop into their team versus it being my team. They'll just say, well, Vic's just getting to coach them. They're really my team. Those are my girls. That's what's happened before when, I, when we've done this. So. That's what's fun and exciting for me in building a program. Part of building a program is not just the wins and losses and the X's and O's, it's your fan base. And it's been hard here because we've had obviously some obstacles with COVID and um, not the greatest accessibility to our arena that we were in before in the parking. We all know what the excuses are. Bottom line is we got to try to find a way to navigate and fix it. So should we focus on the players when, like when after the game or anytime they're available? focus more on them asking questions versus you. We can't always go to you, but dive into them more with that. Oh, I think, yeah, I think our kids are, they're fun. You know, I enjoy being around them. They're, they're, they've got great personalities and 
again, they're going to be great ambassadors for the University of Texas when they graduate. Um, but to me, I mean, we've got some really unique players, and we just signed a class that's really unique. We're always going to have great players here at Texas. There's always going to be competition here. And, but I think that's what you do. If you're going to have a top 10 program, not a top 25 basketball team, but a top 10 program, you've got to stack classes. And we've been able to do that the, the time that we've been here. So that's how you do it. We've, we've got to continue to do it, though. We're still trying to catch up a little bit. Right, Jeremy, you heard him. No, no big at post game anymore. Just <laughs> no play. No play. <laughs> Um, the, do you need your freshman, um, I mean, and Jack, to step up in order for you to succeed this season? Yeah, no question. Yeah, I think that's a great question, and the answer is absolutely. Those kids have – they've got to contribute. They've got to be able to function and play, and, um, and, and so that's kind of been a – you know, they – we've not handled them with kid gloves. We've, we've really – you know, thrown them in the fire in practice in our two exhibitions and demanded of them just like we would demand of a senior because I think that both those kids bring something to the table that we can absolutely use and take advantage of. So we need those kids to be good, no question. And I think both of them are going to be monsters before they leave here, but we need them to be, you know, uh, we need them to be able to function right now, you know, in, in, in a, in a big-time game setting. and. Here's the thing, Danny, they're, they're fixed to be thrown in a really big blazing fire in these first five games. We got some really good teams we're fixing to see. And so they'll get a taste early, which will really, it'll, it'll pay off for us. They might have some rough patches, but that's just part of it. But time January and February roll around, those kids will be ready. They, there won't be anything they haven't seen and, and haven't had to deal with. Given the fact that they're, sub, they're backups, can you, you can, can you live with the foul trouble that they sometimes will have? Uh, yeah, it, it, no, we don't, we don't want them to be in foul trouble. We don't want them contributing to the team fouls. Uh, you know, we had a little bit of that last year with a player or two, and I finally just had to take them out of the lineup. I mean, we just, we have to, you know, we can't continue to have these fouls and because even though it might, have, might not affect you as a player, it's affecting our team because we're putting the other team on the free throw line. So, yeah, no, we've got to teach that. And, uh, you know, Jock's been in foul trouble, and, and, and she knows it. And uh, we've just got to coach better and teach better with her. That's the bottom line. Did you check out the men's game at all on Monday or I don't know if it was on Thursday, just get a feel of what it you played exhibition games, but what an actual game is that what you said? Yeah, um, I went to the Arkansas game. And uh, um, I saw the game Monday night. Uh, tomorrow night, uh, it'll just depend on how much film I'm watching, whether I'm at their game or, or getting ready for mine on Friday. But uh, if I don't, if I'm not in the arena, I'll have it on TV for sure. But uh, the arena certainly has a different feel than what you and I have been in, and you've been in that other one a lot longer than me. But uh, you know, the thirty, however many. 400 we had for uh, Wayland the other night. Even our even our kids made mention of the fact that it just really feels like the fans are on top of you and, and it's quite a bit louder. So uh, it's a unique, you know, it's unique and uh, our kids are really excited to be able to play in there. And, and so we're, we're trying to, we're trying to equal the arena by being the product that we put on the floor. Yep, go ahead. Coach, going a different uh, route here, would you have any, if, and she gets to see this, any words um, to the player who's locked up in Russia? I think they just transferred her. Um, you know, uh, what's your take? I know it's a hard thing. Can you even talk about that? Is there anything? I mean, well, yeah, I mean, I think somebody asked me that the, a day, you know, a couple of times before, but here's my thought on it. We, we talk to our kids, okay? We talk about communication. Like, that's something that we talk about in practice every day, communicating on defense, communicating, communicating. We talk to our own kids about communicating. We deal with communication issues in our city. We all know what I'm talking about. We deal with communication problems all over the world. It is a sad state of affairs when our communication 
with other countries in, in the state that it's in that we're having to having something like this happen. And the fact of the matter is this, and I saw somebody say this the other day, and I don't disagree with them. If that was LeBron James or someone else like that, will we still be in this situation? I mean, I, whether it was, it was LeBron or anyone else, would we still be doing this, really? I mean, would our communication be this way right now? And so it's, it's terrible. As a parent, I can't imagine what her parents are going through. I've met them. You know, I recruited her a long time ago. I can't imagine what they're going through as a parent. It has to be extremely tormenting for them. Um, and it, it's just... But it, it, it's a harsh reality of where we are in the world right now, y'all. And it, 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 it's just really a shame. It really is. Does the team think about her, talk about her at all, or use collecting? I, I mean, we've, I, I think there's been, um, I think someone asked Sonia about it up here the other day. And how, I mean, how do you not think about someone in your profession, someone in your, your, you feel that that is having to deal with something like this, and uh, so it's it, it's it's just concerning, you know. Again, we've got a war going on over in Ukraine. You've got this going on. This is our world, y'all. We, you know, we might live in our own little bubble here in Austin, Texas, or our own little fishbowl, whatever you want to call it. That's real life over there right now. That's two instances right now, right there that, let's face it, everybody in the room, we're not familiar with that. But that's real world, that, that's going on right now. There's people dying in a war. It just doesn't make sense to me. It's really hard for me to fathom all that. So it's a shame and yes, I think about it often and again, my heart goes out to not only her, but her family and her parents. It's, I can't imagine that. So, yep, go ahead, Dave. Um, terrible transition, I know, but this recruiting cycle, was it more difficult to recruit these athletes and you know, convince their parents to come to Texas with what the transfer portal is and knowing that, is it hard to recruit high school kids now? I don't, I don't think so. Um, you know, you've heard me talk about this. I, I, perfect world. I want the high school player, but I need them to stay. My concern with the high school players today is that they won't come, they won't spend the time, they won't develop, let us develop them so that they can become the player that they want to become. Everything is such instant gratification in this world, as you know, and it's just really hard. You have to be a really unique and special player to be able to play as an 18-year-old versus 22-year-olds. I think y'all have heard me say this before, but I'll say it again. The day of an offensive lineman coming in, red shirt, and not playing his red shirt freshman year, which is a sophomore year, playing a little bit his next year, maybe playing a lot, but might not be a starter his senior year. Then his fifth year, he's finally a starter, and then he becomes a second round draft pick. Those years probably are no more. Because everybody's in their ear telling them they're the next best thing since sliced bread, and they need to be playing right now, and they need to be playing the whole game. And so that's the battle that we have uh, in college athletics. And, um, and so, um, my perfect world, I, I, I love the, getting the high school player and being able to work with them and develop them and teach them and letting them, because here's, here's what's going on right now in our program, just to give you an insight. We have, four, we have four players out of the transfer portal and we have two freshmen, okay? So you got two 18 year olds that have habits just from junior high and high school. But then I got four really good kids out of the transfer portal, they not only have their habits from junior high and high school, but they got their habits from three, and some of them, four years of college. 
And that system that they're coming from is vastly different from our system and what we want to do and how we want to do it. So I've had 26 practices to break those habits. It's impossible. 52 practices and gonna break some of them. So what we have today will be vastly different in February, I hope, but it's gonna take some time. Everybody's excited about these teams, us included that on paper, they're like, oh my God. But you gotta remember, we all do things differently. And so getting people to do things our way and, and Again, remember, we have the saying, it's not what we do, but how we do it that separates us from the rest of the country. They're great kids. They work hard. They play really hard. But there's just things philosophically that are vastly different. Again, it's like taking a wishbone quarterback and going and putting him <coughs> in a run and shoot. You ain't going to break those habits, right? And so, uh, or create different habits. And so that's our challenge right now with our, our team at Texas, we have six returners and seven newbies. I think I got those numbers right, Danny. I know you're going to check those numbers. <laughs> Two of the transfers are guards. You know, one guard came back, but it's not with the team. Yep. Is that the kind of thing you have to face? Like you know, Somebody who's already been here once playing time, and now these other kids come in. Is that, is that a problem? Well, I mean, I don't Again, the answer to that is we're always going to have competition here at Texas. That's never going to change. I just signed two Gatorade Players of the Year at, at guard. So we'll have more competition. We're always going to have competition, but to me, that's how you get better. You don't get better coming in here thinking you're the best player on the team or you are the best player on the team, but there's nobody to push you every day. And you're only going to play against 10, 11, 12 teams that might be as good or better than you, you know, a comp competitor. How are you going to get better 12 times out of 365 days? But if you're competing with people on your team that are really good every day and they're pushing you and you're pushing them, now you've got a chance to have something special. But again, the kids might be okay with it and they might be all right with being on a great team and winning championships and being a part of that and whatever their role is, being happy with that, but is mom and dad, former coaches, you know, whoever else out there that might be in their ear. That's the challenge that we have. And so um, it's, it's just, it's a real, it's a real challenge in today's world for sure in, in all of athletics. Just take one more quick one, then we got yep. to Coach, can you just talk about Gary Broadhead and the job he's done at Louisiana? I believe you guys are friends. I've known each other. We are, yeah. yeah. You know, Gary's a good friend. Uh, lost his wife a few years back, and uh, I watched him go through that battle from afar, but um, he's done a heck of a job. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll go back there and play him there. Um, um, I did that when I was at Mississippi State. We took our team back there, and good gosh, he about beat us. He had us down 15 in the first half. It was elementary school day. He got 5,000 kids in there screaming their head off, and we were down 15, couldn't guard them, didn't know what to do with them. I mean, it was a train wreck for a long time. Uh, we finally scrapped around and found a way to win, but he does a great job. They beat U of H the other night. Um, team played really hard. Good night. They played really hard. And he just lost probably his best player. Again, two years in a row. So um, a lot of respect and admiration for him and his staff. They do a great job. Uh, he's somebody that I always will play because he's going to challenge you. And his teams are always going to be good. They're going to be tough. And they're going to be competitive. And uh, so. Yeah, uh, I just hope it's not more than we wanted to bite off first round out of the box, but it is what it is. We got to get ready. All right. Thanks, Doug. Thanks, Doug. Appreciate y'all. Praise the Lord. Good morning.